is a fighting game from Square Enix. Square Enix. Koei Tecmo there it is. Games. And Koei Tecmo. Team Ninja. And Team Ninja. And it is very beautiful. So look at that. Look at this. Really excited to get into this masterpiece. Alright, wanted to let you see that epic opening there. Dissidia Final Fantasy. So, without further ado, let's begin. So first off, I'm going to head into the tutorial. Now, Choose your character. I'm going to pick my favorite from Final Fantasy 4 for this, Gold Bears. Just to start it off. Select a battle set, Koopo. Choose your so for this first Koopo. part, I'm going to do a compilation of these. For the first part, I'm doing the tutorial. Then, in subsequent parts, I'll cover Select the other modes. So, I have already cleared a couple, but I will go back through them. So let's cover the basics. We'll start with the most fundamental skill, movement. Push L in the direction you wish to move your character. You can jump by pressing X, hold down the button to jump higher. Press X again in mid-air to jump a second time. Some characters can even jump more than that. Next we'll learn how to operate the camera. Use R to rotate the camera. Press R3 to reset the camera's position. Now let's put what you've learned to the test. Move with L and jump with X to get your destination in no time. Press triangle to start. So we got movement down. Next is targeting. In battle, the enemy you are targeting will be marked with a circular icon. Any attacks you make will be directed toward your target. Press L2 and R2 to target enemies to the left or right of your current target. You may change these controls from the options menu. You can also press L2 and R2 simultaneously to target the nearest foe. When you are being targeted, 
hit by an enemy, a target line will display above your head. When the enemy attacks, the line will turn red. Prepare to counter or defend against the incoming onslaught. Now try it yourself. Press L2 to target the foe on your left, R2 to target the foe on your right, and then L2 and R2 to target the nearest foe. Press triangle to begin. Your adversary is not alone, Kubo. Okay. Congrats, Kubo. Nice. Next is dashing. So dashing, lock on targets are useful for closing distance. Hold down R2 to take the shortest route to your target. If you would rather move about freely while dashing, press L in the direction you want to go while holding down R. Press R2 and X when near a tree or wall to run up to it. You do not need to hold down the dash button while running up obstacles. The dash gauge will deplete when you dash or run up objects, and once it runs out you will stop dashing. It refills however while you are grounded and not attacking. Time to try these techniques out. Perform a lock on dash or free dash to get to your destination by pressing R or R1 and L, then run up a nearby tree by pressing R1 and X. Press triangle to begin. So let's go. That is the dash. And this is running up. <laughs> okay. That's amazing. A tree. without actually running because using magic like a boss. So bravery, a character's ability to take and deal damage is determined by two values, HP and bravery. Bravery attacks increase your opponent's bravery while increasing your own. You can perform a variety of bravery attacks by pressing circle, R1 plus circle, L up plus circle, or down L plus circle. Your bravery signifies the power of your HP attacks. Perform one by pressing square to inflict HP damage equal to your current bravery. While you can't defeat an opponent with bravery attacks alone, you can leave them broken by reducing your bravery below zero. As a bonus for doing so, your bravery will increase by the amount indicated by the break bonus number. When a number indicating your bravery turns purple, it's time to move in for the kill and fail your target in a single HP attack. Now try it out. Reduce your opponent's bravery below zero with circle to break them, then raise your own bravery high enough and finally fell them with an HP attack by pressing square. Circle their bravery and assault them with HP attacks, Kubo! Now... Try the other one. And then there is one orange circle. Cool. Guarding and sidestepping. Now you've learned how to defend yourself. First, let's talk about guarding. You can generate a barrier that nullifies all bravery damage by holding down L1. However, guarding against attacks will slowly defeat your guard stamina. As you lose stamina, the barrier around you will change color from green to yellow and finally red. Stop guarding, however, and your guard stamina will gradually replenish. If you defend from further attacks after the barrier turns red, it will break. After the barrier is broken, you will be dizzy and unable to move for a short time. This leaves you open to devastating attacks to so defend wisely. Guarding isn't the only way to avoid damage. Sidestepping can be used to dodge attacks completely. Press L1 while moving L to sidestep in that direction. Also, you aren't invincible while sidestepping. You can dodge incoming attacks entirely if you time it right. Lastly, we'll learn how to recover from attacks. After being launched by a bravery attack, 
press X in mid-air to recover and prepare for any further attacks. If you sidestep right after recovering, you will stay invincible slightly longer. Now defend yourself from an enemy onslaught with the techniques you've learned. Remember, press L1 to guard, L1 plus L to sidestep, and X to recover while in air. Skillful sidestepping and gifted guarding will render attacks harmless, Kubo. Recovery. Guard. Sidestep. EX skills. Now we'll move on to EX skills. Powerful abilities that can strengthen your allies or weaken your foes. Your first common EX skill can be activated by pressing L up plus triangle and your second one by pressing L down plus triangle. Each skill can be used once its respective gauge fills up. The gauges fill over time and also when you land attacks. Common EX skills can be set from the customization menu. Once there, go to character customization, select a character, then go to EX skill sets to find a pair of skills that complement your playstyle and current strategies. The skills assigned to just triangle are unique to each character and form the backbone of their playstyles. Icons display when someone is bestowed with an effect. Blue icons indicate beneficial effects called buffs, while red icons represent detrimental ones called debuffs. Familiarize yourself with EX skills now. Remember, press up L plus triangle to use EX skill 1 and down L plus triangle to use EX skill 2. You will begin the demonstration with full EX gauges. Nice. Use EX skills wisely, and winning will be a cinch, Kubo! Congrats, Kubo! Summon. Now let's learn about summons. Powerful beings who bestow blessings upon your party and unleash fury upon your enemies. Summons can be called forth once the summon gauge is full. Attacking foes will fill the gauge slightly, but it fills faster when you destroy summoning cores. Shortly before the core crystallizes, a beam of light will appear. Once you see this, get ready to rush to the core's location. Cores can be damaged with both bravery and HP attacks, and you can be targeted by holding down either L2 or R2. When the summon gauge fills up, press the center pad to start the incantation. You can finish the incantation faster if more allies join in, and once you do, your minion will join the battle. Field. Summon effects are buffs that affect your whole party. They are always active but are enhanced when a summon is invoked on the battlefield. Pick the summon that best suits your strategy and call it forth as soon as you can to take a giant leap towards victory. Now fill up your summon gauge by destroying the core and then call forth your minions. And remember, hold down L2 or R2 to target the core and center pad to begin summoning. Alright, Odin. Chat messages. Now we'll learn how to communicate using chat messages. Use them to speak with your allies and your character's voice. Use directional paths to open one of the chat windows and then press the button. Triangle, circle, X, or square corresponding to the message you want to send. You may close the chat window with center pad. These controls may also be changed in the options menu. Remember that during online play, real people control the other characters. Please be considerate when communicating with them. Alright, it's time to send some messages of your own. Since your allies and enemies here are AI controlled, feel free to send whichever message you like. Call forth our summon. 
call full of our dummy. Victory condition. Now it's time to discuss how the victors of a standard match are decided. If your HP is reduced to zero, you'll be anticipated and your party health will go down by one. If you take away all three points of the enemy's party health, you win. If time runs out, the match will be treated as a loss for both parties. Even if you lose all your HP, fear not. As long as some party health remains, you can return to the fray. Move to an advantageous spot and press circle to revive yourself. Time to practice. Revive yourself and deplete the enemy's party health. Put it into practice, Koopa. Ow. My strength falters. I must keep pace. What? How did that happen? Let's try this again. Practice makes perfect, Koopa. Strength falters. There is still time. Okay. Had to be in the circle. Uh yeah. Ah, uh, why not? Let's target the bigger one. Oh, sick. This move. Lopez's elemental magic is sick. Now, let's do a little sparring match. Believe that we can win, and we shall. Do not disappoint me. Trout and triumph, Koopa! Oh, is done. Much appreciated. Alright, summon to save the day. Or not. Maybe.
What am I doing? Go back as range for that, that, not that much range. This fight's already won. Much appreciated. All right. Alright, so that has been a mock battle of what we've learned. So yeah, that was fun. Hope you all learned a lot from that. And let us move on to the advance oh see I can't use marksman characters for the dash cancel so let's go to character selection I bet someone like Zidane would have that ability choose your character Koopa. So let's try Zidane. Select a battle set, Koopa. Select a summon, Koopa. That cancels. After making an attack, you will be able to do anything for a sh you will be unable to do anything for a short period of time. Dash canceling is a technique you can use to shorten this post-attack downtime by dashing after you have performed a move. To cancel into a dash, pull R1 after hitting with the final part of a close range attack. You can use this for example to once again close in on an enemy you have smashed into a wall and assail them with even more attacks. Now that you know what dash cancelling is, try this tactic out for yourself. Attack and follow up on it by dash cancelling to keep the blows coming. Try for yourself, Koopa. So let's try it. Uh, that wasn't it. Is a little more technical. Next is evasion cancel and guard cancel. Should you need to suddenly defend yourself after finishing attack, you can cancel that attack's recovery and either block your opponent's incoming attack or sidestep it. You can hold L1 to perform a guard cancel or hold L1 plus L to perform an evasion cancel after an attack. 
With a little practice, you too can definitely avoid anyone who has memorized the links of your attacks and tries to take advantage of them. Now that the explanation is over, why not try to perform both types of cancels yourself? Remember, after an attack, press L1 to cancel into a guard and L1 plus L to cancel into a sidestep. Depleting Bravery. We previously covered what breaking foes entails, but how exactly do we accomplish this? If breaking foes means reducing their bravery below zero, then cornering them while their bravery is already below is a surefire way to exploit this mechanic. Expanding upon that idea, you might want to attack a foe who has just hit someone with an HP attack. A landing HP attack temporarily depletes all of one's bravery. You can easily break them with bravery attacks until their bravery returns to their base value. Now try it yourself. Attack your enemies while their bravery is recovering and keep them on the rope. Range attack strength. Learn how attack strength affects your range attack. Affects how range attack interact. You may only use marksman characters in this tutorial. So let us return to character select and reselect a marksman character. Choose your character, Kubo. I will pick Terra this time around. Select a battle set, Koopa. Select a summon, Koopa. Range attack strength. Learn this lesson well, Koopa. When two sharpshooters try to pick each other off, it is often the one with the greater firepower who prevails. When two ranged attacks collide, they will either annul each other or one will be negated depending on their respective strength. Attacks have four levels of strength in ascending order, weak, moderate, potent, and mighty. Some attacks are anomalous and follow different rules. Attacks of the same strength will annul each other while the weaker attacks will be negated if one is stronger. Therefore, two mighty attacks will annul each other but a mighty attack will negate a potent attack and so forth. However, anonymous attacks cannot negate attacks, nor can they be negated, and they will pass through each other when colliding. Familiarize yourself with how ranged attacks interact by negating terrors. Fyra, an attack of moderate strength with an attack of your own. And I'm Terra. <laughs> Nice. Poise. Learn how poise keeps your attack from being interrupted by others. You may not use marching characters in this tutorial. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the roller coaster ride. Tut. Toot. Choose your character. So for this, let's pick. On your knife. I like onion, do you? Select the summon, Koopa. Learn about poise and you can judge on the fly when to attack and when to hold back. Attacks with high poise have a lower chance of being interrupted by an incoming attack. Each skill has a poise value attached to it, but the poise of bravery attacks is determined by character type. Attacks by vanguards have the highest poise, followed by specialists and assassins, whose attacks have equal poise. 
Marksman's attacks have the lowest poise of all types. However, HP attacks have more poise than any character type bravery attacks. Generally, poise only comes into effect when an attack is active, but some skills have poise before or after an attack is active. Now that you have grasped how poise works, Barrel choose Terra's attacks to take her down. I believe the attack actually has to come out. Uh, there we go. Interrupting. Learn how to interrupt an attack targeted at one of your allies with an attack of your own. Sometimes your allies will need you to stand up for them. Interrupting enemies' attacks with ones of your own can give your party members breathing room. Each skill has an interrupt value, but the interrupt potential of bravery attacks is decided by character type. Attacks by vanguards have the highest interrupt, followed by specialists and assassins, whose attacks have equal interrupt. Marksmen's attacks have the lowest interrupt values of all types. However, HP attacks will interrupt any character's bravery attack. You can save your ally from an enemy's enemy assault when an attack that has a higher interrupt value than the poise value of the attack you want to interrupt. With that in mind, try saving your ally now using an HP attack to interrupt the enemy's onslaught. Try for yourself, Poopo. <laughs> huh. It was because of the rain. Try that again. Try for yourself, Poopo. Yeah, let's do that. Ah, see, see, that's what I get for being Try for yourself, Poopo. What the? What is up with his move? Practice makes perfect, Koopo. Nice. Tandem attacks. Learn how to follow up on an ally's attack to deal a foe even more damage. This, well, this time teamwork is key to surviving in Dissidia and nowhere is that more apparent than when performing tandem attacks. While an opponent is being attacked they will be unable to recover for a brief period of time. This is your chance to cut it in with your own combo and keep the beat down going. Go ahead and try it out. Attack Furion's target with an HP attack of your own, show no mercy. Well met. Try for yourself, Koopo. Oh, Much appreciated. Combos. Tandem attack 2. Learn how to set up a tandem attack after one of your own combos. If you're assailing an enemy, you can set up a tandem attack so you, your allies can have their fun as well. A party member can jump in at any time while you are attacking an enemy and lend their own strength to yours. An effective setup is to cancel your combo right before you send your target flying so your ally can join in and finish them off. Try setting up a tandem attack with your ally now. Practice makes perfect, Koopa. Uh, that was a little too far. <laughs> I love this song. Maybe I should try hitting him toward him. Oh my goodness. 
That hits him too far. My app can change characters again. Thanks, Furion. Alright. But, uh... Oh, okay. I have to use a bravery. Cool. So that has been advanced. Now, let us do core battles. Learn how to switch targeting between the enemy party core and the summoning core. Learn this lesson well, Koopa. The targeting system in core battles is slightly different from that in standard matches. Let's learn how. Hold down L2 to target an enemy party's core. To target the summoning core, hold down R2. Targeting opponents, however, works the same as in standard matches. Pressing L2 targets the enemy to your left. Pressing R2 targets the enemy to your right. And pressing L2 plus R2 targets the nearest enemy. Now it's time for you to try it out. Remember, hold down L2 to target the enemy core. And hold down R2 to target the summoning core. Attacking the enemy core. Destroying the enemy's party's core is key to victory and very similar to destroying normal summoning cores. The difference, however, is the core will be immune from damage if even one member of the enemy party is near. You should first expel any enemies from the area before attacking. Now try it for yourself. Force the enemy out of this area and his master core to pieces. Defending your core. Sometimes the best offense is a good defense, and that principle holds true in core battles as well. You and your party members can defend your core by occupying the area around it, nullifying any attacks made by the enemy. You cannot defend the core when recovering from HP attack damage or during post-survival invincibility. Now give it your all to defend your core. I just stepped right in. Victory conditions. Core battles are an interesting twist on the normal rules and mechanics of the city of battles. Two parties will vie to destroy the opposing team's core before time runs out. Unlike standard matches, there is no party health, so incapacitating foes or becoming incapacitated yourself will have no direct effect on the outcome. However, incapacitated, incapacitated players will suffer a short revival penalty penalty before you can return to the fight. Now sample this mode for yourself, revive somewhere and destroy the enemy core. And lastly, we'll do a mount battle of a core battle. I'll admit you have the courage, but have you the wits? Don't say I didn't warn you. The first team to crush the core wins, well Koopa. Made.
Koopa. The core is being besieged, Koopa. Oh wow, Kane is like whooping me right now. The core is being besieged, Koopa. We have to work together. The core is being besieged, Koopa. Oh, that actually pulls you in. In the core, Blanket at the world in layers of ash. No. We'll try it again. I have allies who can help me. It doesn't matter what they say. I am a knight. The first team to crush the core wins, well Koopa. Yeah, it doesn't matter what I say. What they say, I am a knight. Uh, I love on you, knight man. to prove it. Oh, I gotta get this targeting down. Oh. The core is being besieged, Koopa. Yes. Leave the 
Ninja. That's game. All right. Thank you all for watching. This has been Game Tap, Dissidia NT tutorial. And stoked to get into this. Play, play others, play online, battle people, meet new people. You know, learn the game, learn the characters play to the story everything just really excited thank you again for watching this is game attack we'll bring more content in the future signing out